Do you remember that scene in Pinocchio when our favorite lying doll is convinced by Honest John to take a vacation and then placed on a stagecoach on its way to Pleasure Island where other misfit kids can smoke cigars, drink beer, and break things without any thought of consequences, but are then turned into terrifying mini donkeys, the thought of which still sometimes haunts my dreams, by the way. Well, Hong Kong is Pleasure Island. You land on the bumper car of cities where you constantly feel like you're being hit in the face with different experiences, placed in front of people of every nationality, and find yourself stumbling through tight streets at the cusp of dawn, only to surprisingly find that you have the energy for another run after only a couple hours of sleep. The fountain of youth runs deep here. Citizens of the island seem to never run out of steam, appetite, or their insatiable need for the good things in life. But for visitors like me, a weekend of unchecked hedonism is just a dosage I need to realize that I can't keep up with the city. But I'd be lying if I told you I don't want to do it all over again. So we are now in Hong Kong, probably one of my favorite cities in Asia. It's just a kind of really cool New York vibe that still has a very strong port city vibe as well that's just really interesting. Um, we're in the train, it takes about 24 minutes to get to the city, which is really kind of a quick way. It's less expensive than a cab. And yeah, uh, we're going to do a lot of eating, a lot of drinking. This is the first time in overnight history we're actually going to do things in two nights. So it's 10 p.m. on a Thursday, and we're actually going to leave around 10 a.m. on a Saturday. So we've got two full nights, and it's going to be pretty amazing. I'm pretty sure about that. It's really easy to get into the city. After landing, breeze through immigration, grab your bag, make your way to the airport express, and you'll be in Central in the promised 24 minutes. On your way back to the airport, you can even check into your flight at the central train station. If you miss a plane in this city, it's because you did it on purpose. Hong Kong consists of multiple islands. Hong Kong Island, Kowloon, the New Territories, and a number of smaller islands. It still remains quite small and is packed to the brim with more than 7 million people, making it one of the most densely populated cities in the world. To be in the midst of it all, stay in and around central. There is no better area to be placed to experience the city in all its grandeur. After I got settled in my apartment for the weekend, I went straight out to find some friends. So David's the coffee guy from the Philippines, coffee and bar guy from the Philippines. Uh, he's joining us for this show of overnight. He'll be with us for a couple of days. And I've got Vinny to my right. What's up? So uh, I'm a chef and restaurateur here in Hong Kong. What are your restaurants here? We got Linguini Fini here, which is the flagship, we got Posto Publico, and we got Stone Dollar Tavern over in Wan Chai. Vinny's kind of a double back in the middle, he's got quite a reputation, so we're about oh, to Jesus. see if, if it follows him to Hong Kong. Nah, come on, that's not me, that's not me. First order of business, alcohol and food. The city is packed with so many dining and drinking options, from the high-end Michelin stars to that one shop behind that hardware store up a hundred steps and down a fishy alley, Chinese-speaking coffee shop serving only one kind of dumpling. You'll never get tired of eating and drinking out here. But I wanted crab, topped with spicy stuff. Imagine an illustrious slap of Sichuan peppers buzzing in your mouth like hungry bees, coating the back of your throat with crab fat and garlic oil, all washed down with cold beer. Doesn't get better than that for an early breakfast. We're in Underbridge Spicy Crab, and we're about to eat this medium spicy crab and some clams. Thank you. This shit is not good. Try another one. King Kong. <laughs> You're out of your goddamn mind. Oh, my heart is burning. Holy fuck. Immediate. That, yeah. Immediate. You're, You're teasing me. You're teasing me.
stomachs coated, armed and ready to drink, we head to the Pontiac for a couple of shots from your friendly tattooed bartenders that remind us of an attractive suicide girl but really skilled behind the bar. Other cocktail hangouts you should definitely check out are Rum and Tings, Lily and Bloom, The Woods, Ping Pong, The Envoy, Honey Honey, Quinnery, Origin, or 001 to name a few. Here are some tips from our friend Michael Callahan and Amanda Wan. Clubbing culture is still very strong here in Hong Kong, but I would say the cocktail culture has really grown over the last few years. Not only do you see a lot of uh, spirit-specific bars that open, but you also see a lot more restaurants who are going into more comprehensive cocktail programs. Hong Kong has been on a, on a big expansion for restaurants, less of an expansion for bar programs. I think what's really interesting is that instead of just constantly dumping into new and new uh, programs and trying to reinvent the wheel, Hong Kong's done something quite smart. Hong Kong kind of took a step back, looked at each other and said, guys, this is kind of embarrassing. We should be winning more awards. And that's really where they're at now. And so there's less new bars and a lot more sort of uh, the old bars or the existing bars buckling down, really polishing all of the brass and, and getting out there and doing good things. Day two, four hours of sleep, slightly groggy. We head for a stiff shot of espresso at the famous cupping room for some much needed energy. The city wakes up from its slumber quite brashly. Early mornings, you have a myriad of suits, Chinese merchants, and party goers crossing each other in a well-rehearsed dance. For breakfast, you'll have a choice of heading to either a great western style place like the Papillon Cafe, Cafe Dead End, Nosh, Green Waffle Diner, or the Flying Pen, or going to a Cantonese dim sum spot or traditional tea house cafe like the Australian Dairy Company, Cafe Hoi An, or Tui Ha like we did. Right now we're at Tui Ha, which is a Cha Chang Teng. It's a breakfast tea house. There's a lot of them, all of them have different specialties. So here we're in Tui Ha, which is one of the most popular ones. Um, and if you look at the food in front of us, it's like not really Chinese, right? It's Chinese mixed in with Western, but it's what people here eat. We have... When you mentioned it, was Hokkaido milk? Yeah, so it's Hokkaido milk inside. Hokkaido milk inside of the eggs, so hopefully that makes it really creamy. Some sort of macaroni, pork, minestrone looking thing. Some pork braise with some... And they write instant noodles there, which I think is fantastic. So it's like full on... Instant noodles too. It's full disclosure. Uh, and then this looks potent. Toasted bread with some condensed milk, nice and sweet. Uh, let's try everything. Yeah, that's instant noodle. This is, that's super instant noodle. Yeah, like... It's a decent scramble. I feel like if I'm drunk, and if it's like four in the morning, this would be amazing, like absolutely amazing. After that breakfast mishmash, I was ready for some meat, and boy do people know their stuff here. Each time I come back, I need to have some roasted cuts of various animals on my plate, washed down with some clear broth and well-cooked grains of rice. Here you could never go wrong. In tiny spaces confined by steam, you're presented with the most authentic underbelly of Cantonese cooking. We head to Yat Lok for their famous one Michelin star roasted goose. You could also go to Yung Ki, Cam's, Sham Tseng Chan Ki for a similar sweet umami oily satisfaction. Food in Hong Kong is kind of like a religion. It's absolutely everywhere. People are constantly eating. From seven in the morning, you have these eateries that get filled up from cafes to street vendors to stalls. It's, it's a little overwhelming because it's absolutely everywhere. And here we're just standing in like 
just a really kind of market that's being put together right in front of us. The street scene is really strong and then all the high-end concepts are really strong as well. So Hong Kong really became this like food mecca that people just naturally gravitate to because they just know what they're doing when it comes to food. They do no bullshit, kind of like no holds barred flavors, but at the same time they can do something really refined and really cool. So it's a great place to come when you're hungry. Yes, you could come here for a bunch of foreign style restaurants and trust me there are some great ones. But you should also get your fill of local joints. Here are some of my favorite either authentic or modernized Chinese restaurants. Mop 32, Duddle, Chun Chun Kui, Si Yan, Tim Ho Wan, Loyal Dining, Sun Hing, Sim Chai Ki Noodles, or Bistro Manchu. Getting around the city can get quite hectic, but there's a good underground train system that is pretty well priced and the taxis are never far. However, the bill can rack up quite quickly. If you come to Hong Kong a lot, you'll probably realize that you'll always stay within the central area because that's where everything happens. You know, if you have really cool concepts, tall buildings, lots of chaotic sounds, and just a lot of things happening. But people forget about these neighborhoods like Kennedy Town, Wan Chai, Causeway Bay. They're all up and coming neighborhoods where a lot of kind of cool concepts are being put up by really passionate people. Uh, we met the people from Sunday's Grocery. We have some really cool nigori sake right here. So it's a sake where they re-add the rice where basically you get a nice kind of cloudy color. It's pretty good, um, only 15%, so it's like wine. Um, and yeah, it's just great to meet people that really believe in their craft and are doing something different. If you look around, there's a bunch of places around here. Chino, there's a cool coffee shop. So if you come here and yes, you only have a short time in the area, I really do recommend getting out of Central because you'll always find little gems that you can always talk about to your friends. Sake in hand, we take the ferry to head off towards the more commercial Kowloon Island. So while waiting for the crossing, here's Amanda Wan making you a cocktail. Enjoy! So we find ourselves across the river, we took the ferry, and we are in this place that's extremely busy, a lot of people, it's a different type of chaos. The chaos over there was kind of controlled chaos, this chaos is a bit more aggressive, people are trying to sell me stuff on the road, really not my favorite part of the Hong Kong experience. Loud as hell, but always really good if you want to go shopping for all the big brands. So you might be wondering what I'm doing here. Well, Hong Kong happens to have one of the most thriving tattoo cultures in the world. This small area is packed with extremely talented artists eager to ink your skin. So I'm on my way to meet Mermanda to get my next piece. You remember those guys who sold us some sake? Well, they happen to also run one of my favorite tasting restaurants in the city. Ronin is a well-hidden narrow gem that just understands my needs. We were hit with waves of uni, crab, fresh fish from Japan, and caught in a continuous current of extreme deliciousness. After all that food, I'm really happy that Hong Kong has all these hills to kind of help me burn those calories, but we are happy campers because Elliot, the bar manager, was there, so David got some really cool sakes out of it. Um, the food was absolutely delicious. Ronin is considered one of the best restaurants in Hong Kong, and we walked in around 6.30, found some space, and we were able to get in, and we had a wonderful meal. There are more than enough forward-thinking food concepts to go around, and at the top of my list are Toritama, Brick House, Little Bao, Posto Publico, Holy Fook, Yardbird, Chino, Le Garçon Saigon, Belon, Ichiran. Looking for more people to chat with? Well, head down to the area surrounded Lang Kwai Fung, the popular surreal bar street filled with clubs and drinking holes you'll always wonder how you ended up in and talk to locals or just some people passing by. 
Some of your most interesting conversations can be sparked up this way. If you still manage to be functional by the end of the night, cap things off like a regular with a wrap at Kebab House or Ebenezer's. Why do I love living in Hong Kong and why should people visit? There's just something about this raw underlying energy in Hong Kong. Like nothing is ever really closed throughout the 24 hours that you're here. Yeah, there's always somewhere to go to, there's always something to do. And not only is it in such a modern city centre, if you take probably just a half an hour's drive outside of the city, you will get either a mountain or a sea, and you can take the ferry, you can take a hike up to the peak. There's so many things to do in Hong Kong and there's just this yeah, it's just this energy that never sleeps, never stops and even when you're sitting still, you continue feeling this buzz of it that's right under your feet. So that's what really excites me about Hong Kong. What I love is the fact that any mood you're in, there's always something to do. So if you're hungry, you've got a ton of options from like the countryside kind of food where it's very local to the more modern side where you get pizzas, you get burgers, you get everything that you would want. And um, I also love the fact that it's really hard to feel lonely in Hong Kong. I feel like there's always people around. There's always people you can relate to and places to go, different events to go to. There's photography events and music events and it's just getting bigger every year. And I love that it's always changing. My favorite thing about Hong Kong is probably the hikes. Yeah, I live in Mong Kok, so it's always very crowded, which just gets too much. So you just need to get out of the city. One of my favorite hikes is the three, well actually four waterfall hike in New Territories. It's a great hike, four waterfalls, so beautiful. We were told to hit the trails and so we did. I needed the fresh air anyways and it felt amazing to see the sky without being surrounded by modern giants. There are lots of trails varying in length over here, so just do the one you have time for. What a lot of people don't realize about Hong Kong is that it's a combination of multiple islands. So actually there's a lot of greenery, a lot of like small mountains and rolling hills and you don't have to stay within Central or Kowloon or Hong Kong Island rather. You can go to different kind of smaller islands. We're actually still on Hong Kong Island so the city is right there. We would show it to you but this fog is absolutely crazy. And it's just great treks. There's about three or four trails and you can land in spots like beaches and coves. And In the summer people get boats and have like boat parties. Yes, you have this big bustling city, but in the same time, you have this very kind of close reality to mother nature, which I think is absolutely amazing. So if you're here like us for about 36 hours or more, it's really worth it. So you can go out one night, one night stay in, wake up early, do this trek, you will love it. We finally actually deserve a meal for once. So for our last death march request, we head back to the city for some dim sum. So after that really cool hike, we're in uh, Ling Hung Kui Tea House, which is a really famous tea house here. You see it's really hustling and bustling. It's 9 a.m., so it's actually full people are eating dim sum. It's absolutely amazing. It's something that I would love to do every day if I could. Really great way to kind of just round up our Hong Kong trip. And now we find ourselves in the quintessential Cantonese Hong Kong style tea house. What better way to end our trip than this? Fight, scratch, and scream your way through the noise and throng of hungry eaters to get your hands on undescriptive baskets where only your nose can guide you. Just pick blindly. You'll never be far from something delicious. Just be open to eating whatever you pick up. We ended up in Lin Hung Tea House, but other great places to get your dim sum fix include Dim Dim Sum, Maxim's Palace, One Dim Sum, Luk Yu, Lung King Keen, Phuk Lam Moon, Man Mo Cafe, Island Tang, or Dim Sum Square. Living the Hong Kong Dream. Surrounded by beautiful things and some of the richest people in Asia, it is a city where hard work and dedication can take you to the top. Or so they say. The locals we spoke to were telling us that things were becoming more Chinese. 
A statement that may seem strange at first given that we are technically in China. However, if we dust off our history books, we remember that only 20 years ago was this cluster of islands given back to the mainland. The citizens remained progressive thinkers, free market advocators, and flag bearers of creativity and freedom of speech, but they feel like their older brother is bearing down on their necks. We are quick to forget that about one in five Hong Kong residents actually lives under the poverty line. The prices of land keep increasing due to massive bulk buys by mainland residents and the cost of living is on the rise. People aren't against China. In fact, they know they are Chinese. They just want the 97 transition promise of one country, two systems to be enforced, to be able to maintain an attractive economy and lifestyle. So the people are on the streets fighting for their rights because they believe that their city is one of the best in the world and they want to remain loyal to it. I get it. Hell, I would fight for a tooth and nail. I have the opportunity of living just an hour's plane ride away, and every couple of months, I feel its charms calling to me, beckoning across the sea, a vivid recurring dream, a torrent of heightened experiences, when you wake up in the middle of the night asking yourself if it was real. Hong Kong baits you in, spits you out, and always makes you ask for more. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat for updates and behind-the-scenes pictures and videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.